All right, going to do this video showing that polygamy is in fact a sin. Now, first of all, what is sin according to the Word of God? Well, according to 1 John chapter 3, verse 4, sin is the transgression of God's law. And I'm going to show that God's law teaches that marriage is, is one man and one woman, not one man and three women, or not, or not one man and two women, one man, one woman. So, thus, polygamy is a transgression of God's law, thus polygamy is a sin. I'm going to show from scripture that God's intention of marriage is one man, one woman. Polygamy is just nothing more than fornication when you really get down to it. So let's get right into showing the scriptures that polygamy is in fact a sin and a transgression of God's law according to 1 John chapter 3 verse 4. First of all, the first God-ordained marriage in scripture was one man and one woman. God pulled one rib out of Adam, not two. Also a little side note, the first marriage was prior to the fall of Adam and Eve. Sin had not entered into the world yet. Keep that in mind. Genesis chapter 2 verses 21 and 24. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up his flesh, closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh, and she shall be called woman, because she was taken out of the man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. So, pull one rib out of Adam, not two, and the two become one flesh. Matthew chapter 19, verses 5 to 6. And said, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twine shall be one flesh. Wherefore they are no more twine one flesh, what therefore God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. It's one man and one woman. Jesus Christ affirms that in the Gospel accounts in Matthew chapter 19, verses 5 to 6. The intention of marriage was one man and one woman. That's the original intention prior to the fall of Adam and Eve. Because I'm going to show you that the first polygamous marriage did not happen until after the fall of Adam and Eve, which is when sin entered into the world. Godly marriage, the godly plan for marriage, is monogamy. When marriage is discussed in Paul's epistles, Paul only references singular wife or singular the wife, but never plural wives or the wives. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verses 1 to 3. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman, nevertheless, nevertheless to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. It's singular, never plural. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 31 to 33. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, even the wife, see that she reverence her husband. It's the wife singular. These two become one flesh, not these three or these four, or these the one husband and two wives. These two, one man and one woman, become one flesh. That's God's intention for marriage. Polygamy is a sin. It's a transgression of that command for marriage. It's also worth pointing out that bishops, deacons, and elders are forbidden from having more than one wife. So polygamy is forbidden for elders only, but not for the common laity. You know, that wouldn't make any sense if that if that if that is your viewpoint, if you think polygamy is okay, if that's your viewpoint, it makes no sense at all. No it makes no scriptural or logical sense at all. But bishops and deacons, they're required to only have one wife. Okay? Polygamy is forbidden for bishops, deacons, and elders. First Timothy chapter three, verses one to two. This is a true saying, if a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given hospitality, apt to teach. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 12. Let the, let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their own children, ruling their children and their own house as well. One wife. Singular. 
uh, Titus chapter 1 verses 5 to 6. For this cause left I thee in Crete, uh, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, and, and ordain elders in every city, as I had appointed thee, if any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children not accused of riot or unruly. The deacons and dip the bishops, deacons, and elders can only have one wife. That excludes fornication and that excludes polygamy, which I said earlier is a form of fornication. And finally, like I said earlier, the first instance of polygamy in scripture did not occur until after the fall of, of Adam and Eve, when sin entered into the world. Okay, because like I said earlier, God's intention for marriage, original intention was one man and one woman. That's why he pulled one rib out of Adam. The first polygamous marriage did not occur until after the fall of Adam and Eve when sin entered into the world. Genesis chapter 4, verse 19. Genesis 4, 19. And Lamech took unto him two wives. The name of the one was Ada, and the name of the other, Zillah. Okay, again, after the fall and when sin entered into the world. Because at that point, man was, was doing sinful actions. The man was committing sin in the eyes of God. So one of those sins was polygamy. It's fornication. It's a perversion of God's intention for marriage. It is a transgression of God's law. It's an intention. It's a, tr a transgression of God's intention for marriage. Polygamy is a sin. It's, it's oh, you know, the Old Testament prophets. Some of them committed polygamy. Some of the men of God in the, in the Old Testament committed polygamy. Yeah, and look at what happened to them. You know, I, I plan on doing a video on this. A lot of these polygamous marriages in the Old Testament were not blessed by God. How do you know? Because look at the corrupt fruit that came from them. Okay, you have Solomon with his 300 wives. Look what happened. He, be, he was into idolatry, he was into the sin of interracial marriage, he was into worshipping false gods. And there's other examples too. Again, I'll be doing a whole separate video on this, but a lot of polygamous marriages in the Bible were not blessed by God, and that's evidenced by the corrupt fruit that came from these polygamous marriages. Okay, I'll be showing that in a future video. But polygamy is a sin, it's a, it's a transgression of God's intention for marriage. Don't be deceived by those who would say, oh, polygamy is, it's, it's not okay. Or sorry, polygamy, it's, it's okay, it's not a sin. It is a sin, and it's not okay. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.